Ja. Hello. Good morning, everyone. We are waiting for people to reconnect. Uh, and uh, uh, while we are waiting, I also would like to introduce uh, our guest for today. So, first of all, thank you for joining us at the uh, uh, Swiss Cell webinar. You're and welcome. Today, thank you. And today our guest, our special guest is Dr. Ninad Stankovic. Uh, he is one of the leading experts in aesthetic medicine field and also international speaker. Uh, so, uh, he is doing a series of webinars for Swiss Cell and uh, we welcome you, Dr. Ninad Stankovic, on board. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Valeria. It's been always a pleasure to work with you. And thank you once again to call me uh, for this beautiful and very interesting lecture. So today we're going to speak about how to get a sharp jawline and how to prepare jawline and chin definition with Apriline fillers. Uh, first and foremost, uh, let me introduce uh, Swissell. Swissell is a uh, a uh, Swiss company that is uh, having a brand Aproline as, uh, as well as uh, mesotherapy cell boosters. So this is something that uh, you should also follow on the Instagram, Facebook and LinkedIn. And there you will also receive uh, uh, some other notices about the future webinars and lectures and of course the um, congresses where they will be. So please follow Swissell.pro uh, and uh, now it's a little bit about me. So what is me? So me, uh, I'm uh, doing injectables, chemical peels and lasers from 2010 and uh, this is something I fell in love with and of course I also had very, um, you know, good luck to you know work with uh, uh, the biggest uh, congresses in the world like AMWC in Monaco where I just returned less than a month ago where I had a, a lecture there also I've been uh, speaking at the AMWC in Asia in Taiwan and China as well as uh, AMWC in Latin America IMCAS in Paris so see you in IMCAS very soon so this is uh, these are the places where I join also uh, uh, despite the uh, uh, my uh, asking for you to follow Swiss Cell, please follow me as well on the, the Instagram, Dr. Nenad Stankovic, and there you can also contact me if you would like. Then, of course, I come from Serbia. This is the place I love, but of course, I love to travel a lot. Then, uh, let's talk a little bit about the beauty, of course. So. There's always been a question what beauty is, you know, this is something like a philosophical question, but the beautiful face cannot be defined by a mathematical formula. It reflects the bone, the bone structure, position and volume of the subcutaneous tissue, skin quality, and of course, something that is intangible, the personality of each person. The harmonious proportions of the facial thirds when other features such as eyes, nose, lips, chin, and of course the neck, those are the paramounts for an attractive face. When we speak about that, we think about like every single you know person on the earth, and we have different races. So there's a little bit you know differences in all the races when we speak about you know the beauty of the face and of course the body as well but some features such as harmony symmetry and balance are the key features of perceived attractiveness and facial beauty of course uh, a good webinar and a lecture about the beauty wouldn't be there without angelina jolie so when we speak about the beauty and specifically now when we're speaking about the jawline and the chin, she's also a remarkable um, uh, a a figure that we're going to speak about. Sometimes also famous people like uh, Nora Ephron, a director of uh, very famous movies like Where ha When Harry Met Sally and of course The Bewitched. She said that maybe you felt bad about your 
neck. But you know, have you ever thought about the jawline? Because you can hide your neck with something, right? But you cannot hide your jawline. So jawline, unlike a neck, is almost impossible to hide. And it's very telling the age of the person. So this is something that we should definitely think about. The one thing that is that can you know uh, showcase the age of a person is actually a gonial gonial angle. That gonial uh, gonial angle in very like young like newborns is very blunt, but then it becomes sharper as we age. In a uh, in a females that gonial angle should be like between 120 to 130 degrees. Anything less than that will be too masculine. So masculine uh, would be like 90 to 120, but usually something in between. This angle may not be like ideal due to the different factors like genetics or results of aging, which causes bone resorption in the mandible loss of fat pads, and of course, the skin laxity, which all causes changes in jaw structure. We all use gonial angle as a reference when contouring the jaw to restore the proper shape and the proportion. On this beautiful rotating skull, the red marking on the uh, mandible is actually the gonial angle. So gonial angle is something that is very important. Again, Angelina Jolie. In her case, her gonial angle is 123 degrees, which definitely falls in the, the area of the female beautiful gonial angle. But of course, when we speak about men, men are masculine, men are you know successful and there's also the study about the faces in business so this study the face of success inferences from chief executive officers appearance predict company profits this is like amazing so as when you're beautiful also you're going to profit much much more so the first impressions are very powerful and rich sources on information about other people. And definitely these studies demonstrated that they can predict performance and in numerous domains, such as teaching, or even they can be elected like presidents. The chin in that part is very uh, critical component of perception of facial attractiveness. So, when you think about like a very strong chin, you, be, you think about the military. So there's also another study that the facial dominance of West Point cadets is a predictor of later military rank. The first thing was that actually even during their studies, those with the, you know, those uh, masculine features, they have been reported they had you know, uh, higher ranks. Unfortunately, that didn't really correlate in, their, uh, correlate in their middle career, but afterwards, in the later career, about 20 years after their um, uh, finishing their studies, they, uh, that was something that was really like linked to it. So 20 years or more after the portraits were taken, that suggested that they had a higher rank in the military so it's very very interesting but of course not a lot of us have a very strong chin but today it's very good time for men because men can grow beard so beard is something that it can definitely change your you know looking your shape so because the chin is critical component to the perception of facial attractiveness and despite the geographic and gender differences in chin morphology, chin appearance has been linked not only with attractiveness, but also with the perception of youth youthfulness. That's why we do, because I'm not a barber, I'm not going to, you know, uh, grow your, your beard or, or, you know, sculpt it. I'm going to sculpt your face with hyaluronic fillers. 
and hyaluronic fillers can augment the chin and of course create a beautiful jawline which will you know increase the facial attractiveness man it's time to grow the beard because this guy uh like william paul or something like that he went to a barber and the barber told him you know you should you know grow some beard because you're such an ordinary guy and he was at that point of time selling insurance and after that like uh, a speak with his uh, barber that he's he he was like his guru and then he actually uh, you know lost some uh, some uh, weight then you know uh, he was working out you know changed his diet but also his exp experience uh, appearance and then after just being like a regular guy selling insurance he's now like a famous uh supermodels so this is something that definitely can be done of course even the celebrities are those that uh you know are changing their facial features using at least the beard and you can see here uh, some famous men and of course that's not all when i was a young guy i mean i still i still i have to tell you still read the comics and one of my favorites is of course batman and superman and when you look at them you can see that actually their chin and of course the jawline is super super pronounced because uh that feature is something that is really masculine but of course if you look at the wonder woman on the left you can also see that her jawline is very uh, uh, distinct and very shown so this is something that it is very important but you could ask yourself definitely you know how broad the chin should be so in men the uh, length of the chin like like this should be uh, in the extent of oral commissures in men and you can definitely see that in these pictures and of course in woman should be the width of the canti so the medial canti here so this is the width of the chin so this is very interesting of course now the movies are bringing those toon characters to life and we have when we have those toon characters uh, these are some beautiful women and uh, if you look good at them they have those features like the uh, pronounced definition of the jawline, the beautiful chin, the beautiful uh, lower third. And this is something that we, you know, as ordinary people are looking up to them. And then we want to look a lot like them. Of course, one of the other cartoonish characters is definitely pronouncing the importance of the chin because this is the, this character is called the crimson chin and he's a comic book hero that uh you know is from the city of cincinnati so it's chin instead like uh, cincinnati you know the uh, the uh, the town in uh, united states and this is a fictional of course uh, character but another thing interesting is that he's voice is performed by a famous um uh, host jay leno which also have a really large chin in in, in a real life and uh, even his name like full name like a full uh, uh, uh like uh not character not not superhero but like uh, in uh, real life is charles hampton indigo which is actually like when you get the abbreviation it's again chin so chin is very very important uh, of course, um, I also g gave a lecture like this in uh, China a couple of years ago. Again, it was uh, the the lecture was called Chin a Chin, meaning like China Chin, and there the, the facial shape and the chin there is very important. And in one study, they showed different kinds of chin, and like 52% of all the respondents they said that the heart shape chin is the most beautiful and of course then the oval facial shape which was long thin face and with the narrow round chin of course those uh wide square lower faces uh the chins that are not pronounced like that they weren't that um you know interesting so 
these were like the least preferred by the responders also like the facial shape also interferes a lot where the majority of the responders preferred facial shapes with a pointy chin and a round and flat head shape again the chin shape this is uh at the first time was the like the responder the regular people and then this is like the uh the answers from the doctors itself and they uh said that the the, the ideal part was once again the uh pinpoint uh, the uh, heart shape and again the oval uh part of the chin of course um uh, uh, China is an amazing country and of course their views on the uh, aesthetics are amazing so uh, they do plastic surgery more than any other else uh, usually we think about United States and um, generally the the Brazil but they they, they are completely crazy about uh, you know changing themselves and when they think about the beauty, they think about the big eyes, the high bridged nose, the cherry lips, the sharp chin, and of course, very white pale skin. Virtually all women um, uh, that are popular on social media uh, have these features, and these are some things that, you know, led to, you know, a little bit of diversion. So now in the this entertainment industry we now have a different faces like supermodel face world weary face catfish face elf face first life face even a manga face so these are something that are influencing young girls this young girl called chen shichi she was 19 when she actually you know uh get, got, got a loan from a bank and uh, with that money, she went to the plastic surgeon. She said, I want to look beautiful. And uh, now she, when she changed, even, you know, her life changed completely become, because she, com uh, she became a live stream host. She also had much more, uh, you know, luck in her love. So when you actually, you know, change yourself uh, from outside, you also change yourself from the inside and also things happen so of course this is just like uh, an introduction story but you know um, the doctors would ask okay but what's the anatomy there and what should I worry about so the first things when we speak about the the chin we should you know speak about the anatomy so it's the lower part of the face and this is uh, something that is like uh, influenced and we, when we speak it's the part that is b below the uh, mental li labial line and is uh, lateral lines and of course the lower part of the chin we usually speak about the specific points the pogonion the pogonion is the um, uh, the uh, most anteriorly projected point on the chin the menton is uh, uh, at the inferior part. This is the the inf most inferior part of the uh, of the chin, and gnation is somewhere in between. Also, when we speak about the um, vasculature and of course the anatomy on these pictures you can see the superficial cutaneous pad the fat pad then you can see the uh, muscle the uh, musculus depressor angulioris and below that there we also have the arteries and actually on the number c what you actually see is the gel there are two uh, boluses of gel and the one is actually the uh the one that is uh the deeper on the left on your left side is the one that is put in the supra periostal uh plane meaning just below the muscle very very deep this is where we usually put because when we apply a hyaluronic gel at that part we will uh, just um, have the protrusion of everything above that without having any problems uh, so somebody is raising hand so please take um, uh, yourself you know your freedom ask your questions put it at the questions and answers below and after the end of the lecture I'm going to answer them all so um, 
we can put very deep. But of course, for the uh, rejuvenation part, we can also create the um, very nice um, uh, rejuvenation of the uh, of the of the skin when we inject subdermally, meaning in the superficial fat pads. Uh, so this is uh, something that uh, is distinctly demarcated from the jowl and the submetal compartments. And of course, we also see that the skin here is very thick. It's usually about 2 to 2.5 millimeters in adults and uh, deep to this is the dense subcutaneous fat that is uh, firmly attached to both the skin and the underlying uh, rind muscles. So when we also have this cadaveric uh, dissection, we, we do definitely see the uh, arteries here. So the main artery here is the, um, uh, the, the facial artery that is giving the inferior labial artery and the superior uh, labial artery and also the submental artery. These are something that we should be aware of when we injecting the fillers because when we inject the fillers specifically with the needle, we can compromise the vascular uh, flow with the injection and then the and then we could have the vascular uh, occlusion and this is something that we are usually mostly afraid of so this is something that we are definitely should be aware when we are doing the injection fillers in this part so um, then um, in the area of the uh, jawline and the gaudial angles, we can see the uh, skin folded back completely, showing the superficial fat compartments. And then below the superficial fat compartments, we can see the uh, temporal artery, the parotid gland, the masseter muscle that is deep to that, and of course the platysma muscle insertion in the mandible, and of course, once again, the, uh, the arteries and veins where we have there. When we age, this is something that is unfortunately uh, the uh, something that we cannot go uh, without, but of course we strive to fight it and we fight it with all our strengths and one of our strengths is definitely the injection of uh, hyaluronic fillers. So the thing is that the aging phase shows a significant decrease in matrix nanocrystallites, osteons and osteocytes through the entire skull, including the mandible. And that already happens by the age of 35, which I'm already 40. And that means that I already have the um, uh, much less bone here than I had just a couple of years ago. Then that leads to the loss of mandibular height and the length and then leads then to the uh, what we have like the pre sulcus the, and because we have um, a laxity of the skin the, that's the skin uh, falls down and that is not just of course because of that but uh, also because we lose the bone through the aging the skull here is actually decreases in volume as we age and because we have this um, base that is not as large as before so it's shrinking and then because that base is shrinking we have all the skin that is uh, uh, you know, falling down. This this is where where we say you know it's the it's the gravity the gravity pool and so. But actually, it's because we lose the bone and we lose the fatty tissue. Of course, when a patient comes to us, we should assess the patient about the chin and the gonial angle, and you know if we definitely could help them. In truth majority of the patients don't even know about whether they have the um, a problem with the chin. Usually maybe they, they come because they have big nose, but that big nose may be just because it looks like uh, big because the chin is very small. So sometimes doing a chin 
uh, with the uh, liquid rhinoplasty is something that we can uh, do to beautify the face in a whole. Uh, this is the uh, Gonzalez Ulloa method. This is the line that uh, consists of the vertical line and standing from the nasal, nasal perpendicular to the Frankfurt line. For those that are not familiar with the Frankfurt line, this is the line which extends from the orferi inferior orbital limb rim all the way to the superior margin of the external auditory meatus. An ideal chin based to the gonzalez Loa method is that the chin should meet that line at Pogonian or fall just short of that line. Of course, there are some other uh, of course, um, features, like this is, of course, for the uh, uh, man and woman, and there is the silver method. The silver method is, again, using the Frankfurt line and uh, then they also have the line that is coming from the vermilion border of the lower lip. So one line is Frankfurt line and the other line is the line that is coming uh, that is touching the vermilion border of the lower lip and in this case the ideal uh, chin would just short uh, again just touch the, the line or fall short be, uh, uh, behind it. In this method, for the female, it is ideal, ideal that it is like a little bit more behind than in men. Of course, uh, we don't have to, we, we, we shouldn't look at the patients just from a side. We should also look at patients from, uh, from the, pro, uh, not pro, from Anfas, and this is where vertical chin height comes into, you know, um, into the topic. Because there is a general rule that the thirds, different thirds of the face, the upper third, that is extending from the hairline to the nasion, then the middle third that is extending from the nasion to the subnasale, and then we have the bottom third that is from nasale, subnasale uh, sub to the mentor. And alternative method of analyzing chin in this, um, uh, this program is to consider that the distance from the subnasale to the stomion superus, uh, superius, which is the inferior margin of the uh, vermilion of the upper lip, should ideally be one third of the distance from the subnasale to the menton, which is uh, quite nicely shown on this uh, uh, picture. So we have these two thirds, both in females and the males. But when we're speaking about the males, usually there is this um, different sexual difference that the height in males of the lower third is usually a little bit bigger. Then of course, when we watch the uh, faces here uh, and we are looking at the width at the, uh, uh, at the uh, chin, at the chin and of course the gonial angle, we can see definitely that the, the distance here is almost the same as men, but much different in females and you can see this uh, pinkish quadrant here that is much bigger than this blue line here when we speak about the men so this is something that is also important and when we're um, having the patient in our office coming you know i would like to do a jawline because i saw it on the internet i saw it on facebook or instagram and then you have like a, a person coming with you, to you with a severe sagging, and then just using the hyaluronic fillers would not do the part. This is actually the Merck uh, scale that is validated globally and accepted across the world um, among the uh, practitioners. And it gives the proper assessment 
of the, in this case, the jawline. And uh, it's a simple uh, scale that uh, will, you know, show us in which stage of the aging is the patient that comes to us. So when we have the number zero, there's not sagging at all. And in that, these cases, when we don't have sagging, we can do um, uh, just a filler and uh, we will not use a lot of filler and we will have an amazing result. In the second, um, in, in number one, we have uh, just a mild sagging, which will definitely be created with just beautiful, but of course, with much more filler. When we have moderate sagging, number two, then in these cases, using just the filler will give like a better effect, but not the best effect, because we have then to combine with some other armamentarium that we have in our offices to create that, uh, uh, that uh, skin to go up, usually like with the hyaluronic fillers, injecting at the part of the uh, middle third. And then of course, using some other things like lasers, radio frequency, or some other energy-based devices that will tighten the skin. In the severe sagging or very severe sagging, don't use the fillers because in these parts we already have to use surgery and this is something that definitely even you have a patient that uh, will uh, you know have the financial possibilities to you know pay for a lot of uh, fillers you will not have the best results and of course now like with what and how should I do it the first thing that you know comes to my mind is actually a needle or a cannula so when i started i was doing everything with the needles because needles are more precise but then they give more pain and they, of course the higher risk of bruising and what we actually you know fear the most is actually the chance of vascular complications that's why and uh, now i almost like for everything i use the cannulas which gives the painless, lower risk of complication. But of course, they're less precise. But you know, when you uh, have the experience with them, you don't have that problem. So the major point here is actually you get a cannulas and you will get much less problems, like vascular inclusions and other complications. And also the cannulas will give you like an edge because when a patient comes, you have just like, one point aside, maybe even two, and that is very, very, uh, you know, minimally invasive when compared to anything else. And the patients really come out of your office without edema, without hematoma, without bruising, and you know, they are very happy because they don't have a downtime after the procedure. So when we uh, think, think about injecting it in the chin, dermal fillers can be injected in the chin and this will create a much uh, younger look and feel that that person is much more beautiful so during the aging process what we already saw you know the skull re rotates clockwise so it's actually going you know uh, up front and uh, back so uh, this is the movement that is led by the uh, bone and the soft tissues it, where in those areas they are dissolving. So they are, you know, creating that uh, loss of support of the face. This is why it's very important to increase the height of the chin because when you increase the height of the chin and of course uh, uh, propone it to uh, go a little bit, you know, um, in, uh, in before, then you will get also the longer jawline creating uh, an improvement, the size of the chin, the length of the chin, the projection of the chin, the shape of the chin, and of course, the symmetry of the chin. So these are very, very important things to do. Of course, creating the, uh, that with the uh, needle, uh, specifically creating the balls. So this is where you actually go from perpendicular line going to all the way to the bone i do like um uh 
I, I do try, you know, uh, whether I'm in the bone or not, uh, not in bone, in the vessel or not. So I do try that because uh, that's something it's better to know. But of course, you're never sure. But even in one, you know, in, in those 50 cases that you are sure that in the vessel, you're better to know it and to remove your needle. Then we uh, to to structure the chin, we also use the injection from side. But of course, at this point, I'm definitely um, a cannula guy. Uh, you can use 25 gauge cannula, but definitely I prefer 22 gauge cannula because 22 gauge cannula is the thickest blunt cannula. And of course, I usually like it 70 millimeters. So the longer, the better, because with that one, I can always, you know, with only one injection point, go all the way onto the, you know, uh, lower third and the middle third only with one injection point. So I've chosen cannula. The cannula is going to be my weapon of choice. So my weapon of choice should be filled with the filler. So which filler should I use? Of course, uh, the upper line filler and there's Hydro Normal and Forte. And of course, Forte is something that is uh, that should be applied deepest for volumizing. And because we need volumizing in this area, we are going to use upper line Forte. Upperline is created by Suicel, a Switzerland-based company, and it's the Upperline manufacturer, the innovative line of fillers based on APRI technology. So what are the advantages of you choosing the uh, Upperline filler? Safety, safety for sure. It is a monophasic homogeneous cross-link hyaluronic acid gel that has optimal rheological properties, high level of elasticity and viscosity. It's very stable. It has a very long shelf life, up to three years. Uh, it's cost effective and long lasting. It has a very low residual BDDE, meaning butandiol diglycidyl ether level that complies with both uh, European Union med medical device directives and the FDA, and it's of animal non-animal uh, based uh, source so it's um, it is created by biofermentation of non-animal origin then it has low injection force for more comfort and better control so the APRI technology stands for absolute so it's very high purity it's practical because it's safe and com comfortable it's reliable meaning that 100% effective in what you do and it's intelligent because it disperses uh, uh, and it's very homo homogeneous when you apply it into the skin. So this is something that you're going to use. Aprilin Forte is the uh, filler that has 23 milligram milligrams of hyaluronic acid in one ml. It has a very big, very uh, strong dynamic viscosity one million millipascals per second then it comes in a, with a needle but as i told you i'm gonna choose cannula to do it with and it is uh, supposed to be injected subcutaneous or subperiostal so in my case it works well in both techniques to where I'm gonna inject them. Of course, you don't have to ju just do uh, upper line forte for the chin and the jawline because you can also create beautiful cheeks, zygomatic arch, the nasal labial uh, fold, even uh, for the lips. So these are depending, of course, on the patient and the patient's desire. Uh, this is uh, how much the product itself is cross-linked. The upper line forte is highly cross-linked. The upper line uh, normal is like less cross-linked and of course upper line hydro booster it is non-cross-linked hyaluronic filler uh, completely but it is stabilized by glycerin so it gives um, a duration that is uh, up to six months uh, upper line filler normal six to ten months and uh, upper line filler forte eight to ten months but of course when you do a nose 
definitely one year, one year and a half. So uh, this is definitely the filler that I've started my injection with, and this is something that I definitely know well. So choosing upper line filler, of course, between uh, normal and forte for this kind of thing, we are going to use the upper line forte filler. And of course, the uh, you know you can create uh, the uh, jawline that uh, the jawline and the chin enhancement also without some other things like autologous fat. So I'm fat, and maybe you know I could do that you know with my own fat. But the the the, the idea is that if actually um, a, a surgeon does the augmentation of chin and jawline with a fat. It gives a beautiful result at the beginning, but the problem with autologous fat is actually that the fat itself, you know, after a couple of, you know, uh, days or months, you know, it is just um, uh, decreases, but not uniform. So the patients can be asymmetric after that. And in the um, scientific studies, the patients weren't very satisfied when these um, this part of the of the face were injected with the um, uh, with this uh, autologous fat, but they were much much more uh, satisfied when injected, of course, with hyaluronic fillers. Of course, when uh, uh, there is a surgeon, you know, I'm not a surgeon, but uh, so I'm doing non-surgical rejuvenation. But when uh, a surgeon wants to do it uh, on the on the chin, of course, it can be done. But, you know, a patient and also a surgeon has to think about, um, you know, about the problem. First, you know, it's a big surgery. Then, of course, when you have a big surgery, you have a big downtime, even if you have no complications. But a big surgery can go, go with a lot of complication because complications like, uh, you know, uh, infection, maybe uh, the loss of the uh, transplant, anything can happen so even you know in the united states where they had like a big big surge of the uh of the surgery of the chin they have fallen to more than 50 percent in the last 10 years so in all you know maybe there are some other things but definitely hyaluronic filler augmentation of the chin and the jawline is something that we probably uh could accustom that for so uh, finally, my beautiful patient came to me and she's actually uh, a number like zero. She does not have any sagging on the skin, but she definitely want, uh, wanted a bigger projection in the change in her gonial angle. So as you can see here, I have used uh, upper line forte filler. And uh, uh, because uh, before that, we did not have any anesthetic neither cream or injection completely. So all of this that you're seeing was done completely without any, in, uh, any anesthetic. So the first thing, because I'm using a blood cannula, I have to create an injection hole in the skin. So the injection hole, uh, once, you know, I was doing the injection hole here. And then I would uh, put my cannula, because it's 70 millimeter cannula, uh, blunt cannula, all the way to the chin, which is, which is here pretty, pretty nice. But then again, sometimes I would like uh, have uh, a hematoma to, uh, there or maybe an edema that will, uh, you know, give me a false result. Then I've changed a little bit to the medial because when you're here, you can actually use uh, uh, not as, uh, as long cannula, some shorter cannula like 50, maybe even uh, 38, but usually 50 millimeters cannula. And then I put my cannula inside with it. So putting the cannula, so this is upper line forte and I'm putting the cannula, my tip of the cannula because it's uh, you have uh, you see it you see the markings on the cannula and you have see you see those two lines those two lines are actually representing five centimeters or 50 millimeters and actually uh, the cannula is all the way to here 
so five centimeters to here and it is filling the chin so here i'm actually go i'm actually going subdermally in a superficial fat because with this you will use much less of the product and you will have the increase of the projection with the least problem product possible so now when i'm inside of the tissue in a superficial fat i'm going actually to pull out the product in a linear fashion and that product will stay there as a you know uh, just like a thread let's say and that thread is going to project that jawline that will be much much more visible so when i've when i have done the chin and the uh medial part of the jawline then i change my cannula to the other side so i'm uh, pushing my cannula again subdermally in a superficial fat pad I'm going to the gonial angle and there I present a little bit of bolus meaning different di different patients of course different quantities but usually 0 0.2 to 0 0.3 milliliters in a bolus because that bolus is going to project that angle a little bit more and going to lengthen the inferior uh, mandibular line giving much much uh, bigger uh, uh, projection there so actually creating the uh, injection with the cannula here you're completely safe although here just below uh, like just uh, anteriorly to the masseter actually it should be somewhere here the uh, art, uh the the facial artery is coming to the face so injecting it with the needle is actually very very dumb thing to do and i've seen uh, unfortunately uh some instagram stories of uh doctors or non-doctors doing that so please don't uh then what you have to do is also you have to uh, create that posterior line of the ramus of the mandible and that you're going to do on two different ways this is actually the one uh, the, the first uh, method and this is when you're actually creating that hole the punch hole on the gonial angle and you're going again very superficially meaning uh, subdermally you're going with your cannula all the way almost to the tragus and then pulling the cannula while injecting the product so pulling the cannula and injecting the product you're actually creating the increase of the visual line here and then after that we're going to create like a beautiful result so this is the second method actually uh, and i have to tell you much easier so uh at first i was just doing everything from this hole like here and here but now i'm trying to to do it like with the these two punch holes because they give me like um all uh, better comfort okay so i put the sterile goes here that sterile goes because the cannula is going to go on top of that so my cannula is not going to go through the uh through the hair I'm going to punch punch a needle here and that uh, punch is going to be just perpendicular through the skin to the superficial uh, fat layer and then I'm going to uh, once again inject the cannula here and go again to the gonial angle and put the product there and the product will create a beautiful result so actually what we have received as a result in this patient is this so this is the patient before and after and actually we have used very little product in this particular case was just one ml per side so actually with two mls 
we created this product. But of course, she did not have a visible sagging before. And that's why we can do it. We could do it with so little product. And of course, uh, we, when we have a patient coming to us, we should always, you know, take the evaluation first, as we already spoke, whether using the, uh, uh, the uh, silver method, the, the, the other method, and uh, these methods will show us whether the chin augmentation with filler is appropriate or not. And then we should do some photos, okay? Now that photographing thing is much, much easier when we have phones. But of course, if you have a professional camera and uh, you know a secluded spot specifically for the um, for photographies where you can put you know like stool, the lines, the tripod, and always the same uh, same light and uh, always the same uh, fixture and the lens, then will you will have a much much better you know um, photographs of before and after. And actually, what I see many many times is that actually uh, doctors are putting like a completely different um, different uh, postures of, me of uh, people and like this at the beginning and then like this at the end so even uh, just uh, you know like a slight movement in face is actually uh, creating like a huge uh, uh, difference in a result and of course if we can do a video recording of the patient in animation that is also helpful in assessment and a post-treatment follow-up to ensure a natural appearing result and specifically to decrease some problems with the patients because sometimes patients will come and say I didn't have this, I didn't have that and then because you treated me I'm going, I, I ha I'm having this and then you listen to them and you know nod your hand and then just show them the picture and said listen this is you before and you already had that and when i injected you you look much much better okay so that helps a lot so uh usually the angles that we should you know uh take to with our uh, uh, patients is of course from the side then the three-quarter side and of course from the profile and of course, because this was the uh, the chin uh, and the jawline, this is taken from the, the profile and uh, you can definitely see how the angle, how the line changed and how beautiful this looks on this patient. But of course, I'm going to show you some other patients treated with uh, hyaluronic fillers and uh, you're going to see also different results. And of course, the different quantity of hyaluronic fillers that they've used because I have different patients that are aging differently and so. This is the patient that we uh, put uh, 0.2 products in the chin was bolus technique at D. Tip, you already see a little bit of blood here, and this is the bolus technique all the way to the bone with the uh, you know aspiration to check to check whether you have the uh, whether you are at the uh, uh, vessel. Usually, when you are at the middle of the uh, um, the chin, usually you have less. Um, less possibility that you're hitting the vessel because those vessels are coming like here and here lateral to them to the middle uh, to the middle side but of course you know um, the these vessels are very like going somewhere on their own and can can also come in the middle and then the, the once I also had some um, uh, vascular occlusion here but of course with the use of uh, hyalonidase we completely you know dissolved it and had none of the problems so in this case I've injected uh, 0 0.4 here then 0 point with the cannula in a linear retrograde motion here and you can definitely see the change in her appearance so only with 0.2 milliliters of hyaluronic filler, I've injected her and created some beautiful chin. This is a, a beautiful patient. She's very kind, very, very nice. She's been a patient for many years, 
but she said you know I have a little bit like a square uh, square chin and that I think that's not feminine enough and I want round chin so we've uh, put some hyaluronic filler here so this is all this is only done by the uh, by the needle in a three different injection points the first one was here uh, putting the balls to the bone below the muscle and the second and third were aside creating again the bonus we created a beautiful oval shape of the chin and she was very satisfied and this was a couple of years ago but then the same patient of course had to come again and now she said okay uh, I have a different you know uh, shape of my uh, my chin but when I look myself from a side specifically in some you know um, uh, uh, sh photos like selfies I see that my jawline is not defined enough so uh, what I've done I've uh, put one milliliter of the de dehydronic filler aside just like I've showed you on the first patient so from here injecting all the way to the chin pulling down uh, the product and you can definitely see that now she has a protruded chin but on not only the protruded chin of course the oval chin when we look from the uh, from the anfas and also the jawline is now completely straight and very very nice this is another patient that actually had an asymmetry of the chin so what what uh, we ha I have done is injecting the bolus of the product like 0 0.4 just in this case there's also a point of blood here uh, actually showing you where that injection was so all the way to the bone aspiration and then uh, putting that um, uh, that bolus uh, here created some beautiful symmetry to this patient then of course as we have here this is like the number one uh, aging so there's a little bit of sign of aging a little bit of sagging but very very uh, uh, very small and actually putting a filler here and this was like 3 ml so 1 ml uh, 1 ml here at the lower jawline then half an ml in the ramus and this is the same thing that we've done on the other side we created some beautiful beautiful shape here that you can definitely see on both the left and right side and actually uh, I, I prefer her right side like here yeah, much much better but of course this is like uh, we had only three mls and maybe with just a little bit more this would be a uh, much much better result again uh, this is my uh, my accountant and she came to me and in this case we have uh, injected 5 mls because she definitely have the number uh, number two when we have a little bit of jowling here the laxity of the skin so we had to actually inject more filler to get the results like this so this is something that is also possible speaking that she also had this um, double chin here and you can see that actually because we will lengthen the lower uh, length uh, the length of the lower uh, uh, lower um, line of the mandible we have lengthened of also the we proponed the chin now uh, this double chin does not exist and also the uh, jowls are now much much less visible and this is from the other side so we received like thumbs up definitely for this once again doing the chin so doing the chin from the lateral side this is the patient that definitely had the retruded chin injecting only one ml of the product we uh, uh, we put the chin uh, going forward then again this is the patient where we have actually used seven mls and those seven mls of course because now it's like uh, the patient would have which had a little bit more jowling we also 
put the volume in the cheeks and also doing the zygomatic arch and then creating this beautiful jawline because we had to uh, improve the volume and that volume will create a little bit of lifting for the lower part of the face and that lower part of the face now looks amazing and she's coming back again so this is the another patient you can definitely see that of course with a little bit of less filler we created a much uh, more beautiful um, uh, uh, jawline and uh, actually the last patient that I'm going to show you so this patient is because she's the eldest of the uh, the previous ones she also needs not just the fillers but fillers done the work so this is just like the fillers i i cannot remember maybe 4.5 or, or maybe 5 mls i've used in this area but you can also see that she has the nasal nasal labial folds and the marionette uh, folds which you know uh, the melianet fold definitely improved the chin is protruded the jawline is flat and then actually she needs still to be now treated with another uh, with another motion like the lasers which i which i use because those are going to improve the quality of the skin and they're going to tense the skin so the injection of the hyaluronic acid fillers is something that you can uh, inject for the beautiful results and those results are going to stay there at least for a year in some uh, that are you know more uh, lucky than others will be there for one year and a half maybe even more because i have uh, patients that are having uh, um the uh let's say lips more than a, more almost for two years which is something that usually the majority of the patients do not but they are lucky for that and uh, then this is the same thing with the chin and jawline but of course because you're using the the filler that is the most cross-linked the result is going to stay much much longer than in some other case so at the end, I will. Sh uh, I wish to once again uh, um, thank the uh, Valeria, then the Swiss company and the uh, Brenda Preline that they have faith in me that uh, this uh, topic will be well presented, and they called me to doing this webinar. I also uh, uh, want to thank everybody who uh, you know. Um, had the time and the will to uh, listen to this webinar and i definitely hope that this is something that is uh, and was interesting to you and now i'm going to stop sharing the screen hello it's a uh, uh, yes from petr ivanovic to everyone and now we are going to uh, answer some questions so in the q a box there is there are some questions first there's thank you very much from Susana Fernandez then uh, the same uh, uh, the same doctor asked do you inject hyaluronic acid in the jowl area when you want to improve the mandibular line or you avoid that area interacting only with the area pre jowl and post jowl so I'm going to answer that question and I have to uh, to say it depends in the pants it depends on what so if we already have um, a patient that is just like the the patient that I've uh, treated uh, that you that I've shown you with the April line filler how that looks she didn't have any jowls so I have put my filler all the way long but in a case of let's say the last uh, patient no because she already have a jowl in here so if you already have the uh, jowl in here you do not put the filler there because the filler there will increase the jowl and you will have the result that is not satisfied so the answer to your question it depends if you're not having the jowling you do it all the way if you're having the jowling 
please don't inject in that okay so i hope i was clear then uh when you inject the vertical line pre trago do you use two points of injecting one superior one inferior from the angle is if you inject the areas funny okay uh, so the thing is i use only one injection point it just depends how i feel or how i think that is more comfortable for me to inject so either i'm going to use this one and going upwards there yes i'm use fanning but not not like big fanning like this just like to create the line but of course the line does not does not stick too much and this is the answer so on the other hand if i see that this is more comfortable for me to inject from here then i'm going to put my injection uh point here and then go all the way to the gonial angle and do it like this so uh, I, I take the least me uh, least invasive way okay in the q a questions uh please if you have any any questions so uh thank you thank you thank you uh just a second okay let's see in chat maybe yes veliko hvala thank you so much thank you gracias yes i do have other lectures uh great topic well actually can we go to gonion angle with the cannula instead of uh, using a cannula so i think can we go with the needle instead of using cannula yes thank you for your information thank you so much thank you so much if you have any questions follow my instagram and post a question there no problem no biggie thank you yes we thank you once again all the participants and uh, we will be welcome you on board on next webinar so please stay tuned and have a good day and uh, nice weekend thank you so thank much. thank you so attending. much and i wish to to uh, say that uh, i wish you a uh, happy easter uh, specifically for those that are celebrating uh, this weekend and of course for everybody that also already celebrated last weekend so Please enjoy, have your time with your family and enjoy your work as well when you have time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.